uh, just showing a bit of the uh, air combat, the air system in this game. I'm sorry about the slightly dim lighting, I just can't get it any better. Um, I, uh, so what the situation is, is that um, uh, these uh, German air units are based uh, on an airfield here. And these British air units are based on an airfield here. Um, so they're well within range of each other. Um, the British have uh, two gladiators, Hawk Hurricane unit, a uh, Ferry Swordfish unit, and a Vickers Wellington bomber, a depleted unit. Um, the Germans have two Messerschmitt Bf 109E units and four Heinkel HE111. Um, bomber units there. Now, um, in the uh, the air phase is the first phase after buying offences in the turn, and um, the person who has the most offences or who has bought the most offensive um, decides whether to go first or second. Uh, the Germans win on ties. Now, um, so the British have brought some offensives to get them ahead of the Germans in that case, so that they can now start taking the initiative, and they. Um, decide to go first um, because they fear um, bombing uh, an attack on their air base they're going to try and preempt the Germans um, but um, so this is the situation is that uh, um, yes no uh, the reason why uh, the apart from the Vickers Wellington which is going to stay at the air base um, these are all um, fighter units on the British side now so they're going to attack the uh, German airbase and the bombers cannot defend themselves against enemy fighters at an airbase. Um, actually, neither can ferry swordfish. But anyway, so they go. Um, they have to go through two rounds of combat. Um, before they can uh, withdraw. So uh, this could be quite a devastating attack. Now, um, the uh, Germans and um, Messerschmitts can um, intercept up to four hexes out, so I'm going to have them actually intercept. N no, I'm going to have them intercept in the hex, because then, I don't know, I don't think it makes any difference. Um, so we'll have the combat in the, the um, hex of the German airbase. So they actually defend on six, which is higher than their attack strength, so it's good that they don't intercept. So they get two hits in the first round, um, and nothing back from the attackers. So the attackers have to take two hits. Um, okay, maybe not as devastating attack as we had hoped. Um, they'll continue for a second round, just to try and get something in. No, um, they're not, they're going to withdraw. Okay. So they've withdrawn, and now these um, Messerschmitts are marked as used. So they have been used for that this turn. They can um, be. Um, I put the use marker upside down. If it was this way up, it means that they've used the, their two actions. So aircraft can have two actions in a whole game turn, and that phase, sorry, they're used. So they can. Take an action in another phase. Now the Americans can go in and bomb um, the Brits in their air base um, with these. So I think they're going to try that um, because then they can also use these in another phase for ground attacks. Um, okay. So the British units can't intercept further out because they've activated once this phase. Uh, no, I stand corrected, I can't do that. So bombers can only attack naval or ground targets, not enemy air bases. Um, so we'll scrap that. So that was just a quick look at what these um, two air bases can do to each other as they stand on the map. It's really me, you know, practicing it out, trying to get my head around the possibilities. Which means that now it's the German part of this phase, and these high calls are free to go and bomb um, British um, warships still lurking in Norway there. 
and then the hanging kills can even activate again in a later phase. There's just two rounds of combat are conducted for that, and essentially they score one hit on that, and the Brits have not got much to defend with. Um, plus the port to score one pit with from one hit from the port. So those are semi-used and the Brits have lost a cruiser. Um the Brits do have uh, some a couple more uh, air units there and, and one um Norwegian bomber. I can't see anything for them to do. They should really have joined in on that attack there. They could perhaps, according to rules, go out and uh, attack the U-boats, but I've house ruled that U-boats can't actually be um, attacked by air units. So they will just have to lie idle for this phase. Now we move on to the naval phase. Now, both these air units can attack again in that phase, but then they would be done for the turn. They wouldn't be able to operate in the um, land combat phase. Now I just briefly did the naval phase, which is essentially um, that um, task force, British task force, moved out. It was intercepted by the German submarines. They didn't score a hit, or took a hit, and they've retreated into port there. They continue on their way. Now we move to the um, combat phase, which is land combat. And um, so the Brits can go first. So they have an opportunity to... Um, dive in and pick off perhaps a unit or a stack of units there but this is the trouble is that um with these air units here um they can in these guys are staying within four hexes so these air units can intercept any attack on them and create huge losses against the attackers um so we could have combined light air and land attack but that would be at the british disadvantage so that that's why the brits are kind of um sidling round, though of course they can't leave their airfields um, unguarded, but then the Germans are reluctant to move out of the interception range of their air units there. So as it was after the um, Allied um, movement and then the German movement, they just couldn't get close enough, the Germans couldn't get close enough to launch an offensive, and so um, the uh, waiting bombers there were wasted. Now the Germans are wishing that they'd use them against these um, transport um, and convoy um, that had brought up some more units. But that's the way it goes. Well, um, my game of Operation Visa Rubung has come to an end. Um, we have reached um, the uh, 4th of June to 7th of June term, which is one turn turn before where the Germans have to have completed their uh, invasion, have conquered all, all hexes except for those last two cities, at, all cities except for those last two cities at the end of Norway, um, to win a victory. Otherwise, they can only gain a draw. Um, the British could only gain a draw. The Allies could only gain a draw because they lost their capital ships. So they're just trying to hold out till now, which they have done successfully. So essentially, we've reached a stalemate. Um, you see here that uh, it ended up with a bit of an opposition here, and that the um, there's kind of the um, the Norwegians were planning a line of defence here. Obviously, at this narrow point, very easy to defend in in some respects, and it, it kind of swapped around. They they kind of like cornered some Germans here. They made a breakout. You can you're only out of supply if you're totally surrounded in this game. So, um, these German units are okay. Um. Uh, um, but um, and the Norwegians can't attack them uh, over there in the south. We sort of s had that kind of standoff situation where the Brits were um, afraid to enter the air interception zone. And um, there was a bit of an exchange of forces there, and the Brits did manage to take Bergen here. Now they've done something very interesting. I've turned some counters over and labelled them as task forces. So the Brits have got three task forces out. These are the task forces here, which are essentially each one's got a battleship, uh, two or three three cruisers and two destroyer, uh, destroyer um, forces within them. So they're 
they've been kind of like hopping from um, station to station because um, the idea was that they would help Norway to defend any port hexes they had because um, the uh, naval forces can add half their bombardment strength to any attack on a port hex in which they are within. So that was the um, the holding strategy of the Allied forces. Um, they didn't need it so much because essentially um, the Germans did, were defeated, not that their army was defeated, but their national will, their will to continue the fight was successfully defeated. Um, meaning that um, they essentially ran out of possibility to buy more offensives. Without offensives, they could not take the Norwegians out. Without taking the Norwegians out, um, they could not get to uh, um, enough of the um, cities. So the Norwegians successfully slowed them down and wore down their offensive capability. Um, yeah, so uh, what could have happened differently? Well, on the Allies' side, um, what would have happened differently... In a, in a better sort of world would be that um, they did not lose their capital ships. So you might remember at the start of the game, they, they are allowed um, th three, I can't remember exactly what it was, but essentially they, they had the maximum, they were allowed like three forces um, at sea that then battled the German invasion fleets. Now that was successful because um, the Germans have sustained a lot of losses throughout the campaign. Um, but it also meant that in, in the end the German Navy was able to, so these are all the German losses, which is um, about comparable to the Norwegian losses tit for tat um, in, in ground units, that is. Um, so the Brits kind of that that did help whittle down the Germans a lot, but it event because the German fleet was still in being at that point, and there was some uh, they the German fleet sort of scurried back to port, but not before um, destroying enough um, named ships to force that draw minimum to the Allied side. Um, so in a future game, the Allies, I think, would not combat the um, Germans like that. They would keep their, their um, naval units in port and then use them... Um, later on in the game once they have enough ground units built up in Britain as escorts um, to sort of make uh, the German fleet ineffective against combating them. You could have maximum of six um, ship uh, units in a hex so I think you know if the Germans had tried to defeat um, transporting task forces although obviously they could have more fighting ships because some of the stacking would be taken up on the British side by task forces. They um, it would have whittled them down because uh, I believe the British battleships are more powerful. So on the whole, um, that, that would be a the way to use the fleets. Then they the Brits might wouldn't have got to this point. I don't think of being forced into a draw. Um, well, I don't know, you know, that would be interesting to play out um, in another game. Um, the other thing that's difficult um, for the Brits to know what to do with their air forces, they ended up with um, locating their final bits over here because the Germans have such a preponderance of air force, so they're always going to have um, flight uh, air superiority. The only thing was they did, Germans should have brought in a lake... Um, air base earlier um, because then they have uh, two sets of air forces to use so again six units on a on an air base and so they would have 12 at any time so they could have attacked fleets and um, gone on ground combats that would have made the um, German advance a lot more effective so that was a major tactical error by them I only got it in on the last two turns the lake air base and all it was used for was to land um, by air transportation, these final German troops, which were too late to um, save the day. They, there just wasn't enough time. So um, I think um, this is the state of play at the end of the game. Um, what you see, these are 
German crosses represent the extent of the capturing of all the cities. So all, all the cities within that kind of circle are German controlled. So these are Allied controlled in the north of Norway, still um, Norwegian controlled. How, however, as you see this situation here, if I'd played out the game to the end, I believe the Germans would bust through um, the Norwegians' last ditch stand there quite easily and gain perhaps all of all of these cities up here, but I do not believe they would be able to take back these cities over here. So I think what we would have left with at the end of the whole campaign, or at least up to the uh, end of June, that this game takes us is the Germans holding the top part of Norway and the Allies with a few um, weak forces holding the lower part. So I think the lesson would be that they would have to draw out eventually, but I, I guess the sense is that the German forces used for the conquering of Norway up to that point at the end of June um, would be needed elsewhere. So that might have resulted in a stalemate um, or, or those forces would have not gone somewhere else. What are they finished retaking Norway and then another theatre of, of war would have suffered greatly from the lack of those forces. So I think that was um, a... Uh, a fair conclusion to the game, um, meaning that I, I think that the game models um, a believable situation in terms of the larger picture, because we're fighting against national will to continue, or national morale as they call it in this game, um, versus actual combat capabilities of units. So I think a very successful game. Um, it's uh, it does move quickly. Um, it goes it moves a lot slower when you're doing sea and air um offensives as well. But then you know that adds so much to the flavour incorporating all those lines. Um, it's interesting. The um Grenier Games who produced this are no longer in existence, as far as I can tell. They, their website doesn't exist anymore. Um. I can't find any anything current on the web about them, um, which seems a shame because like uh, this game I think is great. Um, and I looking at some of their other games that they did produce. There's one about of uh, uh, tactical combat, First World War, and that has been reproduced now by I think Tiny Battles Games. So you can get it as a PDF. I'm a PDF print and play um, games lover. Uh, so I'm going to be getting that soon and I'll try that out. A very different system by a different designer. This was designed by Mr. Grenia himself, um, so I congratulate him on that. Um, uh, but it's nice to see that something he picked up is still surviving. Um, it, there's some other games I think he designed as well and, and released through his um, company is... Uh, were two games, one, I can't remember the exact names, but they were basically an Eastern Front and Western Front, um, sorry, Pacific or, or, uh, and uh, European Front games. And essentially they seem to be kind of billed as a much better Axis and Allies type game. And I think, I, I, I don't really want to say it, and I've been sort of holding back from, from it in describing this game at all, but I think... That's where this game's pedigree is coming from. It's kind of like um, it's as the uh, combat and so forth and the movement is as simple as Axis and Allies. The economic system is as simple as Axis and Allies, but it's on hexes and so it has a much more um, nitty-gritty flavoursome feel to it than that... Um, Axis and Allies model. So I think those other two games of his are basically Axis and Allies on hexes and made much better. I'd like to track one or at least of them down, but um, uh, no more produced and, and they look hard to um, to locate, to be sold. I guess there's not many units out there. But um, that'd be interesting. So, yes, and I, th I think it's a shame this great game company is no longer in existence. I wish more people were into these desktop published and print and play type games. But, of course, you know, many people in this hobby are um, quite rightly uh, collectors of beautiful works. And um, some people are collectors of esoteric works such as this. Um, but obviously less, less than normal. So. Uh, what can I say? Yes, last thing says that there are a few holes in the rules. So I had questions 
um, for example, things like um, um, if the units that have been air transported are combated, may they defend. So air transported units um, would be transported in a prior phase, then they might be combated and they can't do anything in the land combat phase, but the move, land movement phase, which is non-combat movement, occurs after, and they are able to move in that. Um, so the question is, can they defend themselves? Um, I would say yes, but there's no ruling about it. So, you know, there's a couple of things like that um, that aren't covered in the rules. Um, apparently there was a rata and updates and so forth on the original game website, but alas, they no longer are. That is no longer is there, and there's nothing on Board Game Geek about it. I'll have a hunt around on Grognards and um, Consim World and, and, and the Game Box to see if anyone knows anything else. But as it is, that is a wrap on this game. Um, I don't know why I put the box there and took it away. <laughs> it's the four foot by uh, one foot long invasion of Norway operation Visa Rubung by Grenier Games, and uh, congratulations on it.